Thanks for joining me today. This is Student Orientation for Extended Campus Internet students. During this training, we're going to take a tour of the Limestone College Extended Campus web pages. We'll go to the library web page and look at all the information they have available for students. We'll talk about resetting your password and checking your Limestone College email account. Then we'll go to the LC portal. We'll log in and look at the different tabs there. We'll look at My Financial Aid, and we'll talk about ECI services. This is an email account that will help you if you have technical difficulties or Blackboard questions. Then we'll go to Blackboard. We'll log in. We'll look at some tutoring information. We'll go into an orientation course and take a look around so you'll be familiar and comfortable with using Blackboard. We have a lot of material to cover today, so let's go ahead and get started. We're starting here at the Limestone homepage. That's www.limestone.edu. As you scroll down, you'll see there's a lot of great information about Limestone here. But for this training, we're going to spend our time under the Internet and Evening Students tab. So we'll click here. and go and look at our web pages. You'll see that most of the menu items are on the left hand side. On the right hand side we do have a commercial and a link to learn more about the program. We have the welcome here, there's a view book here, admission procedures, application, cost and financial aid, a section for military and veterans, academics, request information, and some resources. Then we have the Evening Classroom, Program Overview, a Classroom Degrees and major, Majors, and Site Locations and Contacts, and Schedules and Resources here. I do want to stop here and show you the site locations here in South Carolina and the contacts. You see we have several different um, site locations throughout the state, and then the contact information is here. I'm showing you this because at Limestone, in the extended campus, the way the program's set up is if you're an extended campus internet student and you see a class that you would like to take at an evening campus, you're free to do that. The same thing if you're a classroom student and you see an internet class that you would like to take, you're free to take that. The program's very flexible and we want you to do what's best for you. So. Um, Again, if, if there's a course that you feel more comfortable taking in the classroom than online, here's a listing of the site locations. Of course, you could also work with your advisor to get that information, too. Uh, under the Internet Program, let's look at the Program Overview. All of our courses are in an eight-week format. Uh, the evening classes are also in an eight-week format. Mat. Um, they're blended. They have uh, Part of the coursework in the classroom and part is done online. Uh, we have a listing of our degrees and majors here. If you're watching this video, you've more than likely already applied and been accepted, but if you wanted to see the curriculum listing for another degree, you could come here and uh, view those, and look at the different courses, or if you were interested in going on to pursue our ba uh, Master's of Business Administration after you finish your undergrad degree, you could look at their requirements here too. We have our schedules and resources. You'll find the schedule located here. Right now we're in the spring semester, but the fall semester should be put up around mid-May, early June. The payment form is located here, and this is the form that you submit to um, be enrolled in class. When you submit this payment online, it goes to an enrollment coordinator, and they process it and enroll you in your Blackboard course. The payment form is normally available um, about five weeks before the term starts, so you'll want to check back here to get enrolled. Then we have our drop form. The drop form is for if you enroll in a class and you log in and you think, well, maybe this is not the best fit for me. I'd like to get out of the course. Uh, if you do the drop form, and you'll notice you do have to fill out all of your information and the course number and your reason for dropping, 
uh, then you're free to drop that course without uh, being charged the tuition as long as it's within this drop ad period. It's normally one week. Uh, during this video we're looking at term two. So term two begins on March the 10th and normally the drop ad period would be one week out which would have been March 17th at 5 p.m. but because we have a holiday we've added an extra day here. But again you could drop, do, uh, submit the drop form and then if you wanted to choose another class, you would go back to the payment form and submit another payment form. You have the Proctor application here, and this is an important form. If you're an online student, you're required to take an, a midterm and a final examination. So a proctor is a third-party administrator, or a person who is not related to you. They have at least a four-year degree and your professor will send that password over to the proctor. You make the appointment, sit down with your proctor, and um, they put in the password and you would take your midterm and a final examination. A proctor, that's a word that a lot of us don't use unless we're taking classes. Uh, so you'll want to check this out. Make sure you have this form submitted prior to the midterm exam. So I would say if this is your first semester with us and your first term, that you would no later than three weeks into the course, you would want to have this submitted so that we have time to process it and get it in our system so your professor will know where to send your password. If you look down through the application, you'll see the criteria for the proctor qualification. Some ideas here about the type of person you may want to select. We also have test centers at some of our site locations in Gaffney, in Charleston, and in Columbia. If you remember, we looked at where those sites are located, but you would still need to plan ahead, contact these proctors, and let them know that you would like to take your test there. Uh, there is no charge uh, to take a test at Gaffney, Charleston, or Columbia. You just have to contact these folks and get set up to do that. So for your proctor application, again, you have two choices. You can select your own proctor by submitting this application, or you can uh, go to one of our testing centers. We have our policies and procedures listed here on our website. And then I'm going to contact us. This is a list of all the folks in our department. Your enrollment coordinators are listed here. So if we can ever help with anything, feel free to contact us just by going to our uh, contact us here under Extended Campus Internet Program. We'll be glad to help. I want to go back to the home page. I'm going to scroll down under the main menu to go to the library. We have a great library at Limestone, great resources. They're very, very helpful. You can see they have a menu here with different policies, their services available to you. And then they have resources listed right here in the main area. They have a new search bar, so you can search all of their resources at one time. Then they have online catalog for print books and media, find electronic books, locate journals by title, research databases, a lot of great information. They also have webinars available. This is set up very similar to the way we're meeting today. So I'd encourage you, if you want to learn more about the library, sign up for one of their webinars. They also have questions, ask a librarian. The hours and directions are listed here. They're mobile ready. They have guides here. And you can follow them on Facebook. If you're a Facebook fan, I'd also encourage you to follow us, Extended Campus, on Facebook. Now let's go back to the home page and talk about how to reset your password. The way our accounts are set up here your LC Portal, your Limestone email account, and Blackboard all have the same username and password. 
Our system is set up so that every 180 days you have to reset your password. So the way to do that is go to the home page, scroll down to the student kiosk. Click on the kiosk. And it's going to ask for your last name and your social security number. We don't really use your social security number for anything at all, not on your payment forms. We never ask for that. The only time you would uh, use your social security number is your password. That's it. Uh, if you're completing a payment form, you would use your student identification number that we've assigned to you. But for resetting your password, again, you would put in your last name and your social security number, press Get Information, and it will take you to another screen where you can reset your password. We're going to go back to the home page and we're going to the top tab here that says check email. You'll notice as you go through our, our websites and our different pages that we try to put things in more than one place to make it easier for you. So when we go to the Limestone email, you'll see the Exchange Web Access where we'll log in to check the email. But you'll also see another link to the student kiosk. We're going to go to Exchange Web Access. And today for this example, I'm going to use Frosty Snowman as the student. You'll notice the setup is the first initial for Frosty, which is F. D, which is his middle name, Snowman, his last name, and the month and date that he was born, 1224. This is how your login will be set up as well for your Limestone email account, for your Blackboard account, and for the LC portal. Your first initial, middle initial, your last name, and the month and date of your birth. And then your password will be your social security number with no dashes. We log into Frosty's account, and it looks like he hasn't checked his email in a long time. Uh, you'll notice that there's a variety of emails in here. There's some uh, inclement weather, refunds. Uh, we try at Limestone to send all of the student-related email accounts, uh, emails to this email account, to your Limestone College email account. So I would say make it a habit of checking this account. It's a great... Um, way to find out what's going on at Limestone. Uh, you'll find out you know, different things going on on campus. Your advisor will contact you here. Financial aid will contact you with this email account. So it's very important that you check this. I'm going to sign out. Go back to the home page. We're going to go into the LC portal next. You can get to the LC portal by scrolling down this section you see where we have the quick links. We looked at the student kiosk. Now we're going to look at the portal. You can also bookmark this as portal.limestone.edu. You see there's a place to log in. You can get to the student kiosk here. There's a section for new students and a link to the library. Again, another link to the student kiosk, a link for checking your Limestone email, my financial aid log on. You can get to the academic catalog, the Gaslight student handbook, course evaluations, our emergency alert system, and the campus store. You can get to all of these without logging in. But if you want to see more information about your account, you would need to log in. Again, we're going to use Frosty. And when we log in as Frosty, we're going to see new students, registration, finances, Blackboard, student services, library, and my pages. We'll start here at the home page. We have video tutorials, lots of different videos. We have if you're on campus, this is how you can log into the Wi-Fi. And then if you have a smartphone and you want to connect your Limestone email account,
we have instructions here. It tells you exactly how to set up your email account. This is for an iPhone. Okay, let's go back to the portal. Let's look at the new student tab. This is where um, different forms are located. Do we have registration? We have resources here, the math online lab, the writing lab, and these are all tutorial services made available to you from Limestone. You'll notice that the quick link stayed with us even as we're under this new tab. Student resources, once your proctor is set up, your proctor's name and email address will be located there. You'll want to check this and make sure after you submitted your application for your proctor this is, that this information is correct because this is where your, pro, your um, professor will send the uh, password to the person that's listed here. Then we have more resources. Again, we're going back to see the tutoring information. If you were to have a hold on your account, it would be listed here. Then there's a section for forms. Then we go under registration. Registration is going to show your uh, academic information. It lists your major. Tells you how to complete the online registration. There's a video available. The drop ad, and this is different from the drop ad form that we looked at earlier. This would be if you pre-registered for a course, you're not enrolled yet, you haven't submitted the payment form yet, and you wanted to add or drop a course here. You can see your schedule. You can see your grades. Again, if you click on the link, it'll open up a PDF and show you your grades. You can run an unofficial transcript and do a GPA projection. There are little links here if you wanted to jump down to my academic information without scrolling all the way through the page. Then there's another section again we're under the registration tab, student resources, registration, we're going to look at advising, we'll open up another window, Important announcements. This would be if the registrar's office made changes or had announcements for you. This would show here. You can look at my course needs. You can see Frosty has some general education requirements not met. You can click here to view the exact course needs. There are documents here. A document showing you how to read your degree audit. There's some information about South Carolina tuition grant degree audit. You can view all the details. What if? Uh, this is an area where if you're, say for example, you're a business major and you wanted to look and see what your degree would look like if you selected uh, criminal justice or liberal studies or some other business major. You can just click here, apply your courses, and it will generate a new degree audit showing you uh, what your degree your courses you've already taken would look like if you selected another major. The advising worksheet, uh, this is a variety uh, or a different view, if you will, of your degree audit. As an advisor, I think this is a much easier report to read. I always recommend that students run this instead of the degree audit. It has the same information, it's just in a different format. As you uh, run the advising worksheet, you'll notice that your student identification number is at the top, your name and address, your major. And then as you scroll down and look, any course that has a black dot beside it means that you still need to take that course. Again, this is a very helpful, easy way to view your um, degree. Let's go back to advising, degree audit, uh, what if. You can run your degree audit here, uh, live transcript here, and your uh, live GPA calculator for life scholarship if, you're av if that's available to you. Now let's go to the finances link or tab. 
You'll notice some little shortcuts here. It correlates with all the information on this screen. If you need to make a payment on your payment form and you're paying with credit card, debit card, you can go and watch this little video and it'll walk you through the steps for paying using CashNet. You can view your account balance, your course and fee statement. You can make it a payment through CashNet. Again, this is the uh, link to the instructions of the video and this is where you log in to make your payment. You can manage your refunds. There's all types of information here, uh, resources, financial aid login, financial aid awards, some more helpful links, the contacts of the business office, the refund schedule, and then this is for day students. And then this section is if you need information for your tax return, for your tuition, you can come here and access that information. I'm going to skip Blackboard for the moment. We'll come back to that when we log in. We're going to jump over to Student Services. This is for the day students because it concerns housing. Then the library. As you remember, we looked at the, the library web page and saw all the great details. This is just another uh, way to get to their information if you're working within the portal. Uh, links, their hours. If they were online now, you could actually do chat with a librarian. Uh, they do live chat. Right now they're offline, but normally they're available and then the uh, library guides. And we clicked on students only. You see more links here. Connecting your smartphone to the LC library guide. Apps for iPhones and iPads for the library uh, guide. There's Brain Pop, which is a good way to um, test your knowledge of a subject. And then forms available. Now let's go to Blackboard, and within this area, you see that you can log into Blackboard directly from this site. You, this means that when we click on this link, we're going straight into Blackboard. We don't have to enter our password and username again. Need technical assistance? ECI Services, this is the email address that you would e send an email to if you had any kind of problems with Blackboard, technical difficulty, or questions. You can contact us daytime, evenings, and weekends. This email account is monitored. You may want to make a note of this. It's ECI Services at limestone.edu. Again, you can get to us through the portal just by need technical assistance. There's Blackboard Help for Students. We click on this link. It takes us to a learning center. Blackboard has provided great tutorials. There's videos here, uh, documents that you can download. To help you with navigation. So if you get stuck and um, it's during the middle of the night and I'm not available or my colleague's not available, just go here to the uh, help, on-demand help, and they have like some great tutorials here. Okay. We've listed the extended campus contacts here, online forms, again the proctor application, frequently asked questions, put some more information here for you to get back to the library. There's some tutorial information here. The online math lab, that is a limestone math tutoring lab. The online writing lab, that's a limestone writing lab available for you. And then Khan Academy is a website that has free tutorial videos 24-7. Uh, you can just log in. You need to set up an account. You can even use your Facebook to log in and view any kind of information, including a prep for GRE and GMAT. It's a great website. And then we have the Limestone College Online Financial Aid System. You can access the information here. Okay, so now we're going to log into Blackboard through the portal. So we'll just click on this link. That will take us straight in. I want to show you a couple of other ways that you can get into Blackboard. Going back to the Limestone 
website. Type that in. Okay, so back at the Limestone website, scroll all the way to the bottom, and there's a link to Blackboard Learn. So we can log in. That's one way we can log in. The other way we can log in is we can type in limestone9, that's the number 9, dot blackboard.com. We could bookmark it there. Or, as we went in through the portal, it brought us right into Blackboard. When you log in, this is the, the log out button here. It just toggles on and off. So if you wanted to log out, you would press that. There's a navigation menu right beside your name. So let's open this up. Let's click on, well, first of all, we can look and see the different courses that are um, available that we're enrolled in. There are settings here. If you're visually impaired, you can go here and change your settings. Change your text size. This gives you instructions for doing that. You can also choose a high contrast setting to make it a little easier to read. So just know that this is available for you if you're visually impaired or if you need to have the, the text a little larger. Let's do the pull down again and click on the BB Home here and you'll see that a big screen comes up. It has uh, This is like our home base for Blackboard. It has your calendar. If you had recently graded uh, items, they would be listed here. And then if there were posts here in a course that you were enrolled in. Another link that has post. Um, then we have announcements. You can see that we're right now showing the announcements for the payment form for Term 2. If you had um, something that had been graded, there would be a grade here. It's like an introduction to computer science and some grades showing. And then the calendar. And this is an overall calendar for all of your courses. So if your professor has uh, due dates for your courses, they would be listed here. You can also go out and get your external calendar if you'd like so that you can have all of your personal um, calendar entries here in Blackboard. So again, this is just under the tab where your name is, select the Blackboard Home. Or you could jump straight to the calendar from this area. When you initially log in, you're going to be under My LC Blackboard. This has my announcements, my courses, and the on-demand help and learning catalog. Then we have my tasks and tools, my messages, internships, and job search. You can um, access all of this information just right here as soon as you log in. As you take courses at Limestone, you'll notice that this my courses is going to get longer and longer and longer we don't ever remove the courses. And sometimes we hear from students and we're like, you know, I'm tired of looking at all this. How can I get rid of these courses? So I want to show you a quick way that you can hide your courses. They're never removed from Blackboard, but they'll be hidden from you if, if you choose to do that. Just go to this little gear or little wheel, click on it, and you can go down and unselect the course. So let's unselect this course. select Submit, and when we go back, we see that that computer course is no longer showing. Again, it's never really removed, it's just hidden. So to get it back on the screen, we just place a check mark there and press Submit. This is one tip that you'll want to write down and remember, because trust me, as you uh, begin taking classes and this course list gets longer and longer, you will want to hide those. The next tab is Courses. This is just a simple view of only the courses. It doesn't have the announcements of the task. It's just a simple view. It tells you who your instructor is. 
Then we have the My Career. And this tab is for internships.com. We saw that briefly on the My LC Blackboard, but this is where you can log in. You can sign in or sign up using Facebook, log in, and this will show you all kind of uh, internships that are available to you. Uh, you can choose within a certain mile radius of where you live or where you want to work. I think you can select 25 miles, 50 miles, 100 miles. But anyway, these are um, some resources. This is a resource available for you if you decide that you'd like to take an internship while you're here at Limestone. Let's go back to my LC Blackboard. And let's go into the student orientation course. This is a course that you're automatically enrolled in as a student at Limestone. There's no charge for the course. You don't get graded on the course. But we really recommend that you go in and take a look around because this will help you as you're learning to use Blackboard. And as you have questions, um, you, know, you can go in and test some things out, uh, check into how to do certain uh, tools within Blackboard. The first section here tells you how to use the orientation course. There's a welcome, gives you an overview, some information about learning online, a few things every student needs to know. Maybe there's some great information out here, getting organized, Communicating, shows you how to send email, visiting the virtual classroom, There's some information about collaborating, again an introduction, having discussions, using Blackboard Collaborate. This is a new tool that we have at Limestone and your professor may use it. So this tells you how to log in and use Collaborate. Blogging, if your professor uses that, or journal, or wikis, all the information here. And you'll notice, uh, if you click on one of these links, it will bring up even more detail. So this shows you how to, this particular section shows you how to use the discussion board and different ways to view a forum, creating a new thread. And this is the case for all of these tools here. Now one thing about Blackboard that you'll want to do, instead of using your back key, they use breadcrumbs is, is what they call it. But this, this little uh, idea of clicking back rather than using your back button. If you use the back button, you're going to get kicked out of Blackboard. So always remember to use the breadcrumbs. Now this section, the syllabus all the way through help, shows you how limestone uh, courses are set up. Normally when you log in, you're going to see the Limestone College logo, you'll have a welcome letter, you'll have the syllabus which will be on your home page as well as on the toolbar, you'll have announcements on the home page as well as on the toolbar, then you'll have your instructor contact information with their uh, name and whether they want to be contacted by phone or through email. We click on the syllabus link, we open up, we'll have a sample syllabus here. So this is for public speaking, but all of the courses should have this. Announcements. Assignments. Again, this section will show you, give you a little introduction, show you how to submit your assignments. If your professor uses Safe Assign, a Safe Assignment is um, a way to submit uh, an assignment uh, and check for plagiarism. Again, your professor has to set that up, but if they choose to use Safe Assign, here are some instructions of how to use that. Monitoring your progress with my grades. And then assessments, the introduction, launching and completing tests, filling out surveys, orientation course evaluation, and there's even a practice quiz here. So you can go in and do all of this before you start your real uh, course for your term to help you get familiar with what to do. Calendar is here. We talked a little bit about that. We came up to this tab and saw that you can get to it from this area, but you can get to it within the course as well. 
discussions where this area, the uh, communicating, collaborating, talked about discussions, this shows you exactly how to do that. You go in for introductions, create a thread, put in your subject, what you'd like to say, and then submit it. And it uh, for this particular forum, it's creating uh, an acronym and introducing yourself to the class. Then we have learning modules. Your professor may decide to use learning modules. Some of the professors break it down like by week or by chapter and put all their content there. Uh, for this particular uh, example, we just put in a video of the online writing lab. And I would encourage you to watch it because that's helpful information as well. We have mail. Uh, these are course messages. They stay within the course and among course members. Create a message. Then we have my grades. If you had grades, it would be listed here. Um, help. Again, this jumped out of Blackboard into the same help type page that we saw earlier. Finding your way. Navigating the course. Following your own learning path. Personalizing your Blackboard interface. And then Limestone College email. We talked about that earlier, but we placed some information here for you, reminding you of how to check your email and how to log in. I'm going to go back to my LC Blackboard. I want to look one more time at this internships and job search that may be helpful to you. Again, the on-demand help and learning catalog if you get in a bind. Your announcements, this would be uh, just general announcements. We have the payment form going on now, pre-registration for spring. And then I want to show you again about tutoring services. We looked at this in the LC portal under the Blackboard tab. But if you should get into Blackboard by going to limestone9.blackboard.com or clicking the link on the Limestone website, we wanted to still make this information available to you. Tutoring services, khanacademy.org, Mole, which is the Limestone Math Lab, Owl, which is the Limestone Writing Lab, and then we have nettutor.com, which is fee-based, tutor.com, which is fee-based unless you are military, and that is a free service for you. If you need any assistance with Blackboard or have any technical questions, remember to email ecservices at limestone.edu. ecservices at limestone.edu. Wish you lots of success in your courses, and um, if we can ever help with anything, remember to email. Thanks!